Welcome to the conversation. I'm Heil Russell. And I'm Nick Pro. How are you doing this week? Better than last week. It felt like I had uh, barbed wires in my throat, but uh, good to be back. Yeah, it is a really weird eating disorder you've uh, you picked up. <sighs> yeah, I mean, weird. I'm going to be on that show, My Strange Addiction, this year, mm-hmm. so look out for it. It's My episode's called um, Barbarella, because um, <laughs> I love to just watch old cult movies and eat metal so right right well you know it, it's good for the constitution so i hear you know, clears out yeah. clears out any blockage hurts going in feels good coming out mm-hmm. so uh you, you know you do have a little bit of blood in your stool but you can't really help that uh, yeah i had blood in my stool once oh this is a great way to start the show it turns out i was wiping too hard uh so, DK Vine, we're back. DKVine.com is actually working again, thanks to the combined efforts of, uh, well, since this episode is called The Merger, I'll just refer to them as their merged name. Uh, I guess it would be uh, Chat McCorna. Uh, they, uh, they were able to fix the site, so thank you guys. Yeah, uh, it, was a pre- it was pretty depressing to have... Uh, What's essentially uh, my life's work uh, down the tubes for a week. Um, yeah, normally you just feel blah, but but this week you literally were blah. It was personified for everybody to see blah. Yeah, and uh, we we think we sorted out the problem. It was definitely on our uh, hosting providers' end. It it seems like they changed some things without letting us know. Yeah, and we had to fix some code, apparently, and it was all tied up into WordPress, and I'm not going to bore you, even though I am boring you, and I just bored you, and I can't take this back. I can't even edit it out of the show, because I've been contractually obligated to mention WordPress at least once this season, and I would like to get it out of the way. But, uh, yeah, essentially, it, it was just uh, it was just a whole bunch of uh, bullshit that we didn't really need. But, thankfully, it wasn't Mother Russia, it wasn't Putin this time, so... All of you, uh, you know, with peddling the conspiracies about this was uh, Steve Bannon coming for DK Vine because, you know, we represent media. Uh, we, we are the uh, purest form of media. Therefore, we are the, quote, opposition party to Steve Bannon and the Trump administration. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, that wasn't the case. It was just uh, our site essentially was also sick, much like the staffers who have been suffering from uh, – a variety of ailments and maladies over the last couple of weeks. We felt pretty darn blah. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're back. But we're back. Yeah, we're back. So check out DKVine.com. Uh, we still can't do news post. That's the only functionality that uh, isn't available to us at the moment. That's probably for the better because the news right now, come on. we have. I've had enough news. <laughs> right. I really wanted to report about... Uh, you know, the Trump administration scuttling, like, climate research, because that's very relevant to Donkey Kong and Rare, but, uh... uh well, what happened to Gorilla Glacier and everything? I mean, gr- Well, of. Gorilla Glacier, to be fair, that wasn't climate change. That was a volcanic eruption spurred on by hey, the return... climate change comes in different forms. Okay, yeah, it, it, yeah, it comes through uh, man-made carbon emissions, and it comes through uh, ancient tiki-based cults returning from the their fiery grave... Uh, yeah. yeah, Chinese tiki based cults. Yeah, the Tiki Tech tribe was just a Chinese hoax. It's... <laughs> <sighs> anyway, check out dkvine.com. Uh, yeah, our, our news page is is kind of woefully out of date because uh, I haven't even been able to post the for the last two conversations to the main page because uh, I, I haven't been able to access it. But uh, everything else is working just fine right now. So. Uh, check that out. Also, check out DK Vine on social media. We uh, are, for example, on Facebook, dkvine.com slash Facebook. We get daily posts, sometimes many posts a day. Uh, I'm, I'm in charge of that one, and it is where I display the full extent of my psychosis. So 
it's fun for the whole family. DKVine.com slash Facebook. Uh, check out our YouTube channel, DKVine.com slash YouTube. This is the year, Nick. We're going to have quality YouTube content. I, <laughs> we're, we're working on many projects right now, and they were slightly delayed because the site was down this last week, and uh, that was our top priority. Understandably. Yeah. But uh, we're going to have lots more on our YouTube channel besides just conversation episodes very, very soon. You know, I, I can't wait for you to put up my video I did, you know, where I went to the inauguration and asked people which Brothers Bear is best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't wait. I would imagine it would be Barter Bear because he makes the best deals. I could do I could do my Barter Bear by way of Trump if you want. I haven't really perfected it, but uh, I, I make the best deals, okay? All right? I want that mirror. I'll take that mirror, okay? I'm a slob, and now I'm dressed very nice, and I'm beautiful, I'm magnificent, I'm tremendous, Okay. I think we should retire all Trump talk on this program. Oh, I know, I know, I know. We 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 vowed we were going to not be as political this season. We are going to provide people a refuge. I'm not even the political one. I'm starting to become so just by hanging around with this asshole. <laughs> to be fair, Nick, you helped you helped uh, my Trump impression a little bit because uh, sure. you know up until now I've been doing uh, Chad's Trump, which was just Bernie Sanders. So uh, you you've helped me do. Uh, a more accurate Trump, which, to be fair, is just Alec Baldwin's Trump, but... Yeah. <laughs> Always be Trumping, yeah. ABT. Uh, as far as the conversation goes, call the DK Vine hotline at one two eight one four one zero K O N G. We announce the episode topic usually the morning of the, the day we record. So, for example, we'll announce it on the DK Vine forum... We'll announce it on the DK Vine Facebook page, and if you're uh, a Patreon at the five dollar up tier, you will get a notification about the live stream with the topic at hand. So there's lots of ways for you to learn what the topic is. If you have something you want to call in about that topic, call one two eight one four one zero K O N G five six six four, and leave us a message. We will probably play it on the air. The only time we usually don't is if we have way too many calls and we have to cut some. Or you call in too late. Like I've gotten calls while we're recording, and by that point, it's too late for me to pull them out. So, no slight if we don't get to it. But uh, you can call about that topic. You can also call about any topic, and we'll play it on a call sack episode, which we should have one coming up in uh, probably a month or so, I would say. And uh, yeah, just, just just give us a call. We like to hear your pretty pretty voice. Uh, subscribe to the conversation on iTunes if that's your thing. If you'd like to listen to podcasts on iTunes, uh, which is how they were originally intended to be listened to, uh, you can do that. Uh, if you do so, rate us on iTunes. But you can also check out the conversation on SoundCloud, Stitcher. You can just go to dkmind.com and listen to the MP3 that way. And, of course, we post every episode on YouTube. All right. And uh, you know, tell your friends about the show if you want. If you're a fan of any of this nonsense, of this malarkey, am I right? Um, yeah. <laughs> we have fun. I, I, I'm proud of the work we do here, if you can call it work. If, if, if you can be proud of this, I, I am that. It, it's, it's a you can't, show. and I'm not, but I am proud of it. This is our fifth season. We have no signs of uh, slowing down and... Besides the site being hacked and everything else. Yes, but we still got a conversation out that week. And the yeah. week the site went down, we still did the conversation. It's not like DK Vine could just implode upon itself and we would still get out conversations. So I, I'm proud of the consistency of this show. And I'm proud of the consistency of my bowel movements as of late. Uh, I haven't had any IBS <sighs> this last week. So bully for me. I hate this episode. <laughs> Uh, finally, hashtag bring back the spiders. All right. So. Yes. A little history lesson for you. Mm -hmm. let Let me take you back. Let me take you back all the way uh, more than 14 years ago to September 19th, 2002. Mm -hmm. Nintendo sold their 49% stake in Rare. On that day, they sold mm. it back to Rare themselves. The Stamper Brothers bought back the 49% of Rare that Nintendo owned. One day later, on September 20th, it was reported by CNN Money that Microsoft had then gone on to purchase 100% of Rare. This is what we in the Donkey Kong Universe fan community refer to as the buyout. On that day, 
IGN actually reached out to Nintendo of America for their hot take on losing their biggest second party developer. And they actually reached out to, believe it or not, this is his name, George Harrison. He was the senior <laughs> vice president of marketing, corporate communications, and I assume ukuleles and Hare Krishna. As my ukulele softly weeps. <laughs> they reached out to him for comment. And, uh, oh God, let's see if I can do this voice. It's going to be ugly. Um, we sold our position back to Rare, and then they sold the entire company to Microsoft, George Harrison said. Trying to calm nerves, he said, in light of the news that Banjo-Kazooie, Conquer, and Perfect Dark were now owned by Microsoft, uh, he, he wanted to make clear the following. We actually have a new Star Fox game underway. We have Namco developing that in Japan. It is a GameCube game. My understanding is that it will come out in the second half of 2003. And we're going to get started on our own Donkey Kong product internally. That wasn't a Liverpudlian accent, and it wasn't George Harrison. I don't know what that was, but that's how actually Nintendo's George Harrison sounds like. That was a spot We still on. have Donkey Kong, don't you know? That was a spot. Yeah, it's the thing is, if I do a just generic Beatles accent, it's going to be Ringo more often than not, or it's going to yeah. be the Yellow Submarine versions, uh, which are terribly inauthentic. I've got Rare in my pocket. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I tried to be faithful. That I, I tried to do at least George Harrison's, uh, the, the tenor of his voice, if not the accent itself. So uh, anyway, so George Harrison was out there reassuring people, no, 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 we, we lost Rare, but we still have Star Fox, we still have Donkey Kong, and we're hard at work, new games for both. We love you, yeah, yeah, yeah. The buyout, Nick, was a seismic event in DK Vine history. Uh, we've never really yeah, had... more like the cry out. <laughs> what? The crying game. We're all crying. Yeah, mm. yeah. It turns out uh, George Harrison actually had a penis. Just whipped it right out. This whole time. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Norwegian wood. <laughs> Wrong beetle, but okay. Oh. Uh, we... Yeah, but we never really had a, a couple of days like those days in late September 2002 since. Um, I mean, we, wait. So was that how Star Fox Assault was announced? Yeah, yeah. They they, they announced <laughs> That's funny. Star Fox Assault basically trying to calm the nerves of Nintendo fans who were. No, calm down, calm down. Stuff. We got a new Star Fox coming out. Yeah, they had the release window and everything, and no one knew about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. Now, granted, we knew that the buyout was coming. Um, this was just when it was all made official. There, there were rumors in here. They IGN had reported it like. Uh, uh, several days beforehand that it was coming, but we didn't have any concrete news until this day. But according to David Lynch in the chat, um, IGN broke the story on September 11th. So in a way it was our nine 11 in a way. Yes. Uh, in, in many way. ways it was more traumatic than nine 11 um, for, for, for those of us who, you know, are, are heartless and uh, sociopathic. Um, All I know is if Mark Wahlberg had been there, rare would not have been sold. Yeah, yeah, because he's good at beating up Asian people. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Look it up. Um, I know. <laughs> so I mean, when I look at when I look at the whole of DK Vine and Donkey Kong Universe fandom, th there's really been nothing comparable. I mean, we've had huge news stories that have like, kind of blown up our community a bit over the last 15 years. We had Donkey Kong Country Returns. We had Tropical Freeze. We had Tracky the, Train, <laughs> the formation of Platonic, the rebirth of Rare under uh, Phil Spencer and Craig Duncan. I mean, stuff that has really mattered. But I think as far as throwing the Kirk the whole... Cope sex scandal of ninety one mm, of ninety one, I hadn't heard about that. Yeah, just came out actually. The things he that man can do with a xylophone. Ooh, oh. I mean. This was the only time, really, that the, the whole of our fandom was kind of thrown up into question, and we didn't really know what was going to happen. I mean, how would you logically follow a Donkey Kong universe when half the properties that were retained by Nintendo, and then the other half were then retained by Microsoft? Uh, it, it was We were children of divorce, essentially. Yeah, that's essentially what it was, and... I, I was sure, we got two Christmases now, but would they ever be as good as that one Christmas? I remember being fearful, um, but I also kind of tried to step up 
and I, I, I remember trying to be a community leader at that time because I was trying to calm other people's nerves. Uh, I, I can recall that uh, I tried to make the case that this wouldn't change anything. It, the, the only thing that's changed was the need to buy another console, and it also eliminated the possibility that we'd get any more crossovers between Donkey Kong and Banjo-Kazooie. Because uh, at that point, you know, Conquer was already a lost cause. Even if it was staying with Nintendo, Conquer would never cross over with Donkey Kong again. Yeah. No. Nah. He um, pissed that away. This didn't, yeah, literally. Uh, this didn't change the notion that Banjo Kazooie and Conquer were Donkey Kong spinoffs because they were. You can't change their history or where they came from. Um, this didn't mean that anywhere in game it would be stated that Donkey Kong and Star Fox were in no way in the same world as Banjo Kazooie and Conquer. Um, if anything, uh, my viewpoint at the time, at least the public viewpoint when I wasn't panicking behind the scenes, was that this just made the Donkey Kong universe a lot more interesting. And we would still follow it, even if it was thrown to the winds, and we, you know, Nintendo was on this side and Microsoft was on this side. So, I think in the long run I was proved more or less right. Um, the Donkey Kong universe has retained a you know, itself, its its structural core, and it's remained a, a resilient concept to this day. I mean, more almost 15 years later, we're still talking about this shit, and this shit refuses to die, and I would argue that DK Vine is as strong as ever. I mean, it's... And besides the fact, you know, we go down from time to time with messages that just say, blah, we're as strong as ever. Yeah. Uh, anyway. I say all this. Because I wanted to set the table. I wanted to lay the groundwork for what we're talking about this week. Because what are we talking about this week? <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> um, I do. I'm just all playing right, along. All right, all right. I was like, you could check the forum. You could check the Facebook page. You could check the Patreon messages. Or oh, I'm way ahead of you. I, I wrote an essay. I'm ready. Oh, wow. Look at Nick doing homework. Um, you know... I, I say all this, and, and and look how strong the DKU still is. And and in fact, Rare still makes cheeky references to the Nintendo years. Usually, you know, the events of Diddy Kong Racing, because that serves as the easiest way to tie everything together. But Rare still kind of embraces, even now more than ever, the fact that there is this shared universe. There there is this rare archipelago. Um, they, I mean, th this is something they they fully get behind. Even though they don't own Donkey Kong or Star Fox or anything, they still say, yeah, you know, wink, wink, nod, nod. Nudge, nudge, poke, poke. Uh, and, and Nintendo, the Nintendo themselves, they can't fully let it go because Banjo-Kazooie served as one of the inspirations for Retro's Donkey Kong Country. Uh, it got homages, you know, throughout, uh, at least the original game returns. So, yeah, we're still, I mean, the DKU, it's not what it was uh, pre-September 2002, but it's still holding together fairly well. So we, we survived that big scare. I, I say all this just because I wanted to get this out of the way. Um, this was the, the, the fundamental worry that the DKU w wouldn't survive being bisected across two giants of software. But this kind of also started the possibility of something else. It kind of programmed another ticking time bomb that... A lot of us were aware of back in September 2002, but we were, we said, okay, we're, 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 we'll worry about this later. Well, yeah, th this is a ticking time bomb, but it's not going to go off hopefully anytime soon. We'll worry about it later. Well, like we don't a know bomb. It, we'll we just don't know, put it aside. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know if the bomb's going to go off yet, Nick. We don't know what the count, countdown timer says, but the ticking's getting louder. We know that much because... And K. Rule has the nuclear codes. <laughs> because under Rare Nick, uh, Donkey Kong and Mario were genu generally always separated. With some exceptions, which we'll get to in this episode. Don't worry. Don't call in. Don't write yet. I'm aware there's exceptions. I'm going to get to them. Because Donkey Kong was Rare's Mario. Nintendo had Mario, you know, they had the Super Mario franchise. Well, Mr. Pants is rare as Mario, I mean, if you want to break it down. I'm break just kidding. It, I mean, as far as what we think of as rare as mascot, sure. But, I mean, honestly, now... As far as their guy with a mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 
I, I mean, when, when I say Donkey Kong was rare as Mario, I mean, they essentially emulated the Mario series, but with Donkey Kong. We had the 2D platformers. Absolutely. We, we had the 3D platformers. We had the kart racer. We were, you know, going to get puzzle games. R- rare we did was- DK's Missing, a.k.a. DKC2. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we would got would have would have gotten uh, edutainment titles like that. That would have been well horrible, but it would have been delightful because I, I'm kind of anarchic a little bit, and I love weird shit like that. Um, but I mean, Rare built up Donkey Kong's world, and they 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 created the lore for it. I mean, they didn't just recreate Donkey Kong's. Uh, game series they i mean they built it from the ground up they gave him that world yeah because prior to donkey Kong country the only thing known about donkey kong was that he had a son that he kidnapped mario's ex-girlfriend <laughs> that one time and that he liked to hang out at construction sites everything else was kind of fluid and nebulous and there was really no he was concrete. king kong essentially <laughs> he, was, he was king kong um now after super mario brothers inarguably made Mario Nintendo's mascot, the Donkey Kong mm-hmm. franchise kind of withered on the vine for a bit. And, uh, because yeah, because, his... yeah. Yeah, I mean, Mario Mario was suddenly it. I mean, they, they, they focused exclusively on the character of Mario, and Donkey Kong just kind of went away, especially after Donkey Kong 3 and the uh, Donkey Kong Jr. math. And Donkey Kong had a string of kind of critical failures, that that kind of contributed to it kind of fading away while Mario's star continued to burn brighter and brighter. He went from Jumpman to Mario. Wasn't he Jumpman in, D- in Donkey Kong? It, it was Jumpman, but I mean, he, he, it was, he, the name Mario was retconned onto him. It, it's essentially the uh, same character, you know? Yeah. Um, now, because of the historical origins of Mario, you know, also de- debuting in Donkey Kong Arcade with Donkey Kong and Pauline... This would sometimes provide Donkey Kong an olive branch to appear in a cameo or two. Uh, I, I would say the height of this was Donkey Kong Jr. appearing in Super Mario Kart in 1992. But mm-hmm. besides this, you rarely saw Donkey Kong or Sun in these days. I think he appeared in the uh, the one NES golf game uh, where uh, Daisy also appeared. Uh, hmm. he, he showed up in like Tetris and um, I want to say maybe... A version of a psych bike. I, I don't know. He would show up in, in weird places from time to time, but there was really no dedicated uh, Donkey Kong games during this time. Uh, following the success of Rare's reinvention of Donkey Kong, of course, Mario Kart 64 uh, brought in the modern Donkey Kong, you know, because they initially dropped Donkey Kong Jr. for Mario Kart 64, along with Koopa Troopa, in favor of Wario and Kamek. But at the 11th hour, they swapped out Kamek for rares donkey kong so oh i did not know that yeah yeah so uh, this is this is a get long rid of that playstation wizard <laughs> this is a long convoluted way of saying you know uh rare brought back donkey kong and prior to that there really wasn't much for donkey kong but I- i'm gonna go back over the history here uh of the incremental edging towards a a merger between the Mario franchise and the Donkey Kong franchise, which has kind of been the biggest fear for Donkey Kong Country purists since the buyout. Honestly, before the buyout, a little bit. Uh, And we've had some close calls that we didn't even know about, which we'll go over. But what I want to do with this episode, Nick, um, is is basically look at the historical... uh, kind of approach towards this cliff that it feels like we're headed on, which of course is back in the news because of new donk city in super Mario odyssey, which we talked about two weeks mm-hmm. ago. And I want to examine whether or not the concept of the donkey Kong universe could survive quote unquote merger, the, the, the said merger and whether it's something we actually have to be worried about or not. So, well, yeah, I mean, we're we're in denial of so many things as it is. We could just deny if it ever happened. We could. I don't think uh, the majority of our audience would let us deny it. No. Though. So, I mean, this has been the creeping tear for Donkey Kong fans. And you equated the uh, Nintendo and Rare separation like a divorce. And it really did feel like that. And when Mommy and Daddy get a divorce, they're no longer around to protect us from the boogeyman. And in this case, the boogeyman... Uh, is dad's new girlfriend 
which is a merged Mario and Donkey Kong uh, franchise. Yeah. So uh. I, I would argue that uh, this would be the biggest upheaval for the Donkey Kong universe in its nearly 23-year history since the buyout. We survived the buyout just fine. But would we survive this? This is the question. That would definitely put things up in a heaval. So let's look at the history, Nick. I, I realize we just had a mm-hmm. big history lesson, but it was completely unrelated to the actual topic at hand. So let's oh, yeah, it was the boring as history. shit. Yeah, yeah. All right. So it's worth pointing out before we even begin, because, again, we're going to be getting letters. We're going to be getting angry phone calls. We're going to be getting YouTube comments that call us frauds, know nothing, no, we're hats, not. fake paid actors. We, we will. I know it. Uh, so let, let's let's get this out of the way from the start. It's worth pointing out, Nick, that when the ideas for what Donkey Kong Country would become were being considered by Rare, one of them was Donkey Kong fighting Wario. Were you aware of this? The Wario thing? Yeah. Yeah. That I remember seeing a design document for that. Didn't somebody yeah. tweet that or something? Greg Mails. Yeah, Greg Mails actually yeah. tweeted the uh, the. The design book they when they were uh, when Rare was coming up for pitches for their uh, ACM game uh, for Nintendo, Man, a Rare the, Wario would be amazing. Well, I mean, you know, because they they gotten the the stampers had invested in the Silicon Graphics workstation, and Nintendo was interested, and so it's like, okay, come up with a pitch. And I I think by that point, like Nintendo told them, do something with Donkey Kong because we we want Donkey Kong's on the shelf. We haven't done anything with Donkey Kong for years. Resurrect Donkey Kong. And so they came up with some ideas. And and one of them was essentially Donkey Kong versus Wario. And we don't really know too much in the way of it because we didn't see the inside of the design document. But we saw the the cover. And maybe it never really got that far. But from the start, this was an idea because Wario was a kind of an emerging superstar for Nintendo during this time period. Uh... Wario Land, Super Mario Brother, Super Mario Land Three, excuse me, uh, had recently come out, and mm-hmm. it, it was clear that he Wario was kind of being angled for a spinoff, and that was the game that more or less launched the the Wario series. Um, One of my favorite series ever. Yeah, I mean, as far as platformers go, it's pro- uh, Nintendo platformers go. It's probably second uh, in my uh, esteem uh, next to Donkey Kong Country itself. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I'm a I'm a fan of the Wario character it, in my uh, DK Vine office, my command center here. Uh, I've got you know all sorts of Donkey Kong Universe paraphernalia, toys, posters, uh, artwork, and uh, not too much in the way of uh, Mario. But what I do have is a Wario action figure and some more. As uh, one should, I think uh, I have the same figure. Wario amiibo. You know, I I have this stuff on display because. For me, Wario is a Mario character I kind of like because he's kind he's of, a Mario character with character. He he's not just a a bland corporate icon like a Mickey Mouse, uh, with with some minor characteristics. He he's kind yeah. of more fully fleshed out than that. He, he's an asshole. Now, he's greedy. In in the Mario RPGs and stuff, uh, Paper Mario, etc. The all the Mario characters have character, but for the most part, outside of those. Wario's the only real shining, uh, shining guy for me. Yeah, I'm not including the RP again because people always ride my ass for this. I'm not. Yeah, I wanted to be fair. I'm not including the RPGs when I go on about. Well, Mario doesn't have any character. He's a bland Mickey Mouse corporate icon. Uh, I, I'm not saying that in relation to the RPG games, but of course, apparently the RPG Mario's aren't the canonical Mario from the mainline universe. At least the Paper Mario wow. ones aren't. So. Uh, is that that one game kind of blew that That's all obnoxious. out? That's <laughs> obnoxious. So, uh, yeah. So this would this would have been interesting. I mean, had they gone down this route, Nick, the whole idea of the quote Donkey Kong series being something unique would have never come to pass. And who knows? Maybe the Wario series would have never come to pass. Maybe Donkey Kong and Wario would have been shackled together from that point on, as, as kind of these weird Mario's like enemies who got lumped into their own series together and if that was the case it it might be that dk vine would never come to pass because honestly what spoke to me for donkey Kong country was 
that it was a series that starred primates, which I loved as a kid, that it was so heavily based in nature and and granted, I mean, Rare made it and I love Rare. And so maybe I would have found my way to it no matter what. It, so you were legitimately like a big primate fan before Donkey Kong? I thought Donkey Kong got you into them. No, no. I oh. I was enamored with uh, apes and monkeys as a kid. Something about them just spoke to me. And then I got my hands on Donkey Kong Country, and it was just kind of like this this game I'd been waiting my whole life for. Made but sense. It, but had no yeah. idea. And it wasn't just that it, the fact that it starred uh, primates, but it, of course. it was like yeah. a total package. But, I mean, yeah, Nick, I, I've got Donkey Kong Classics for the NES, and I I remember not liking the original arcade Donkey Kong, but loving Donkey Kong Jr. because I got to play as the gorilla in that one, and Mark, yeah. the human, was the bad guy. And I, whenever Taste I, of things to come. Whenever I rented Super Mario Kart, I would always play Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, in, in the two years before Donkey Kong Country, I would always play as Donkey Kong Jr. because I had to play as the gorilla. Um, so yeah, I mean, this was, this was encoded in my DNA even before Donkey Kong Country, but were Donkey you a big like Planet of the Apes fan or no, no, not at that time. I mean, I, I, I'm still not a huge Planet of the Apes fan because it's an ape dystopia and I prefer an ape utopia, uh -huh. but, uh, <laughs> that, which is why I like well, it's a dystopia just for us, right? Yeah. But it's a utopia even, for even then, I mean, I like, I like the idea of rare's take on an ape civilization it's so much more in line with my idea of what a uh, ideal society would be honestly <laughs> so we had we had our big uh politics no humans we had a bit our big politics in a dku episode right before election day and uh last season and uh we, we talked a little bit about the governmental structure and i think i, I labeled it a congocracy i want to yeah. live in a congocracy nick I think that would be. Uh, I, think, I think I called it an anarchy incorrectly. I think something. I, as Matt would say, that would be ace. So yeah. I mean, that being said, you know the the whole notion of the Donkey Kong series being its own thing was almost uh, miscarried, you know, f from the start. Thankfully, it came to term. Uh, it was born, and uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful baby. Now, during the Donkey Kong Country era, though. Uh, there was kind of a parallel shadow government of a Donkey Kong series at work because hmm. the arcade representations of Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. would appear in some Mario side games during these couple of years. For example, Mario's Tennis for the Virtual Boy had Donkey Kong Jr. in it and the Game & Watch Gallery games, which came out uh, right after Donkey Kong Country 3, but before Donkey Kong Land 3, came out I think early 97 is when that series started, uh, they would have the arcade versions of both Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. Actually, hmm. they were the Donkey Kong 94 uh, versions of them, which was the last game of the arcade era that served to reintroduce the public to Donkey Kong's roots before... I really Donkey liked that game, and I, didn't, didn't, and I sucked at the original arcade game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Donkey Kong 94 is a game I've kind of warmed up to over the years as uh, the, the arcade gameplay done right, I think, um, or, or done right. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I played it for like, played it on some road trip or some trip somewhere for like a couple days. I wasn't, I don't think I owned it. I don't know how I had it, but it was fun. Um, I, I, I think the music think, always gives me warm memories. Yeah, I think in light of the Mario versus Donkey Kong series, which kind of uh, shit the bed a little bit. Um, oh, excuse me pissed the bed uh, that's for you donald um i Ugh. i know i know i'm sorry nick i i'm so you gotta help me you gotta you gotta call me out on this and you're helping when you groan like that i know i i made a mistake and i can serve to correct my mistake for the future right. so thank I'm you proud to groan for you thank you for being uh for being my anchor thank you for writing me when i'm wrong i'm the wind beneath your wings so anyway, yeah, Donkey Kong 94, in light of Mario versus Donkey Kong kind of screwing up the arcade gameplay, I, I've, I've definitely... Uh, I haven't played those games. Did they really screw it up as, as weird as they are? Or do they suck? Yeah, because they immediately degenerated into Lemmings-style gameplay rather okay. than... And then Pipe Mania-style gameplay. The, the only one that attempted to emulate the original arcade games was the original Mario versus Donkey Kong. And it was... Uh, a shadow of the game Donkey Kong 94 was. So, 
Was were the little mini things were they in it from the get go or was yeah. that later? No, the minis were in it from okay. the get go, and then they became the focus of the series. So it kind of lost like the plot rabbits almost immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, Donkey Kong ninety four the uh, the Miyamoto illustrations of um, Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Junior. Um, that that kind of they they look like the arcade versions, but Miyamoto did have a, a tie for uh, Donkey Kong Senior. Did give him a little bit of a cow like, but not the full on like gelled rail, rare swirl of <laughs> uh, the the modern Donkey Kong. But yeah, th- these were still used in games while Donkey Kong Country was a thing, and it, it was kind of this weird split. And on- honestly, it w- it was fine. It-, it felt like a nice compromise at the time because rare's Donkey Kong. Uh, Including, you know, the, the aged up versions of the characters, not Donkey Kong Sr. and Donkey Kong Jr., but Cranky Kong and modern Donkey Kong. Uh, they, mm-hmm. they would they would be its own thing over here in their own series. <clears throat> while Mario, whenever they wanted to, you know, have have a tip of the hat to its roots, they could have the past arcade representations running around in their side games. So it felt like the best of both worlds, and I really liked I mean, it, it it was kind of confusing, and I understand that it would be confusing for branding purposes to have parallel Donkey Kongs running around at Nintendo during this time. But as a fan of Rare's Donkey Kong, I was fine with it, and um, this is how things were for the first roughly two, well, more than two years. But for you know, it, it was essentially up to the buyout you would have this because you would have these game and watch gallery games and whatnot, you, you would have these arcade ni- uh, Donkey Kong 94 versions of Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. running around up until the buyout, uh, even when the modern Donkey Kong would start appearing in other things. Hmm. So there's that late 1995. We had, I guess the first kind of crack in the wall. What was it? Wasn't, wasn't like a, even losing a brick, but there, there's definitely uh, a little bit of structural disintegrity. And that's when Donkey Kong Country 2 got a bit cheeky by having Mario and Yoshi appear on Cranky Kong's video game hero screen to show off the hero coin totals uh, whenever you would beat K. Rool. Uh, Link was also there if you were rubbish at playing the game. <laughs> and uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Shoes and Earthworm Jim's Blaster could also be seen near a trash bin. So, yeah, th- th- this, this happened, but uh, I think... I remember I viewed it, and I think some people viewed it as less of a canonical appearance of Mario and Yoshi than a little joke just there to establish Diddy Kong's new standing next to Nintendo's elite characters. And yes, for the record, back in late 1995, Yoshi was considered an elite Nintendo character alongside Mario and Link. Uh, (laughs) I, I I realized Super Metroid came out that year, but honestly... It was like Nintendo's like heavy hitters were Mario, Yoshi, uh, Link, I guess, and Donkey and Diddy Kong. Um, I think that's a, a lot of the reason Metroid fans are still uh, ass hurt over <coughs> Donkey Kong. Not just because of the whole retro thing, but because uh, Donkey Kong Country really did steal Super Metroid's thunder in 1994. Yeah. So, I mean... Personally, I've always written these off as being simple animatronics, not the actual characters, because how would Link <laughs> be there? How would, you know, how would, uh, why would Mario and Yoshi be there on Crocodile Isle? Uh, it, it was just Cranky Kong's way of saying, well, I, I've crunched the numbers and I, I, I believe Mario would have only gotten 39 hero coins. Uh, well, the, like are how- the characters animated? I forget. They're 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 animated in a very basic way. They just it's just idle animation of Mario. He 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 waves and then he kind of turns his head and then he waves again and then he turns his head. Uh, Yoshi is just walking in place and Link kind of crouches down and then he decrouches and then he crouches down. <laughs> and uh, well, when when Cranky talks being, about being a video game hero and everything, what do you how do you interpret that? Well, I mean, obviously, Donkey Kong Country breaks the, the fourth wall all the time. So. so I just consider that also breaking the fourth wall, with showing other Nintendo yeah. characters, just saying, like, these are other video game characters. Not that they really were there on the island or that they were animatronics, really. Right, right. 
Um, yeah, it, it was kind of me. just, yeah. No, I, I see what you're saying, and I, I basically agree. It's, it's breaking the fourth wall, and if you really want to get technical, you can explain it away. You could even say they're the real characters, whatever. But, uh, you know, a lot of people forget Link was there because they usually get more hero coins uh, than Link supposedly got. So they never really see Link on the hero coin screen. I remember having to play through Donkey Kong Country 2 and avoiding hero coins in one playthrough just so I could see who would be on the podium if uh if diddy didn't get enough diddy and dixie didn't get en- enough hero coins so um <laughs> and I, w- I was like is that link because it it i was used to the link being this stout little guy uh running around the screen because this was pre ocarina of time and uh i was like oh i guess that's link from zelda he looks different being tall um anyway so that was kind of the first crack in the wall and yeah, it was the it, old look of link before they made link look stupider it was the old Link, oh, old Link, old look of Mario, too. I mean, Mario, this yeah. was pre-Super Mario 64 Mario when he was more routinely displayed as a stout, short, uh, chubby kind of schlub. Uh, Mario 64. The way they made of, all the characters look, the way Rare did, actually, is like more my preferred old school look of them. Yeah, yeah. It was essentially Rare doing ACM versions of the old school illustrations before yeah. the Nintendo 64 era, and you would have, you know, more computer modeled versions of these characters and a more standardized look. I realized Link never really has a standardized look because there, there's a new Link every generation. But Mario, I like the old, like kind of darker reddish blonde hair with like a bigger nose, where he actually looked like a kind of like an elfin kid rather than some pretty. He looks became more like a Legolas over time, where he looked more like a, I don't know. Santa Elf originally. He, anime Legolas. That's a good way to describe what Link yeah. kind of, uh, evolved into over time. <laughs> Which is I, fine, I but I just really love the classic Link. Yeah, so do I. And I, I love the classic Mario because he looks like a blue collar schlub, not this athletic gnome or whatever the fuck he's supposed to be now. Well, he's he obviously actually, not a human. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Uh, or he's, he's just a really ugly human, Nick. I think, I think we can still embrace that. Hell, we don't even know if those are humans in New Donk City. It could be, an, they could be aliens for all we know, but we'll could get to New Donk City. be his version of like Westworld or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. But, uh, this was the first time Rare did a model for Mario and Yoshi. And surprisingly, it wouldn't be the last time, even if they never saw the fruits of that labor, um, come to be uh but more on that in a bit so early uh 1996 oh hold on david lynch in the chat there's more people in the chat but we're just responding to david lynch D- uh, david in the chat says fun fact the game boy advance version version switched yoshi and link's places so yeah uh clearly by 2005 Link was uh, held in much higher renown than Yoshi was, so they they corrected that a little bit. But um, early in ni- which I believe I fan wanked that away as saying Cranky had two separate hero coin calculations. There was the one for because the uh, the Game Boy Advance remake added more hero coins. So I said if, if there was the primary forty hero coins, then. Uh, Yoshi beat Link, but if they were going for the the total package, then uh, Link beat Yoshi. Don't ask me how that makes sense, but it makes sense, Nick. All right? (laughs) It makes sense. All right. Thanks for agreeing with me. You really helped my ego and uh, my fragile, fragile little ego. There's nothing else to stroke. Just nod silently. Early 1996. um, This was when Nintendo showed off the upcoming, speak of the devil, Super Mario RPG. The the first uh, RPG Mario game made by Square. And it was the only one that had the uh, computer graphics that kind of tried to look like ACM because that was what was in vogue at the time. Donkey Kong Country started a little revolution there and everybody was trying to ape those graphics a little bit. You know, over at Sega <laughs> you had vector man and this this was square kind of trying to do something similar with with mario and uh yeah it didn't look as nice and or as polished as rares did but it's still pretty good 
um, you know, for for con considering what it was, it, you know, I think Super Mario RPG. Vector Man is like I, the equivalent of if they called Donkey Kong uh, ACM Monkey. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. But uh, Super Mario RPG. Yeah, I don't know if it holds up the graphics, but I think it looked good for the time. Uh, included were two characters though when Nintendo were, was showing this off. And it was Chained Kong and Gorilla. Gorilla, as in Gorilla Warfare. Um, it's a really clever pun. Now, these were not Kongs that had ever appeared in a Donkey Kong game before or since. But they were clearly modeled after Rare's Donkey Kong. Not the Miyamoto illustrations that the other Mario games at the time were using. So, I remember, and I know I've talked about this on the air recently, that there was confusion for me for about a month that this was actually because i didn't know that these were called chain kong and gorilla and i thought i just saw the screenshot and i thought this was donkey kong in super mario rpg so yeah. for about one month's time in the spring of 1996 i was fully prepared to buy super mario rpg when it came out just for donkey kong's appearance so this was the first <laughs> time i remember facing the possibility of what was essentially uh my donkey kong being shoehorned into a Mario game. And, of course, this was still um, more than three years before DK Vine was a thing, so I, I can't get a read on what the international Donkey Kong Country fan base was thinking at the time. But I, I would have to imagine there were some people out there uh, reading their Nintendo magazines, getting getting worried. I was like, oh, my God, Donkey Kong's going to be in Super Mario RPG? Rare as Donkey Kong? What the fuck? But it was a false alarm. But it, it was still the first time that a company other than Rare used that look for a uh, a gorilla. And uh, yeah. it, it, was, it was a close call, and it kind of made me realize that the, the splits between Donkey Kong Country and Mario was more tenuous than I had anticipated. The lines were it, fading. Yeah, it, it was only a matter of time before somebody came along and and took a brick out of that wall. I'm getting very Roger Waters with this episode, I, I realize. I, I was going to go Cronenberg with the whole merger idea, some sort of body horror aspect, but it's starting to turn into more of a uh, Pink Floyd uh, tribute. So late 1996, later that year, right before Donkey Kong Country 3 came out, uh, what the Japanese call Super Donkey Kong, a.k.a. Rare's Donkey Kong, uh, he was revealed to be included in the upcoming Mario Kart 64. And this this was when it was revealed. They switched out Kamek for Donkey Kong, the modern Donkey Kong. And obviously there was some historical lineage here because Donkey Kong Jr. appeared in Super Mario Kart. And the fact that it was widely assumed that Donkey Kong Jr. was the same character as Rare's modern Donkey Kong... It seemed like, okay, this is a big deal, but it's also... Was that quite... widely assumed or just by people that like read the DKC instruction manual and followed such things? Widely assumed by the hardcore aficionados. Ah, okay. I, I, I don't know if it was like common knowledge. It's, I mean, it, it'll, it'll never be common knowledge, but I think anybody paying attention... It, it was definitely my assumption, and then when I got online... I found like-minded weirdos who also made that assumption, so I wasn't the only one out there. Yeah. It's, kind, it's kind of hard talking about the, the general impressions of this pre-DK Vine era because I just assume that my thoughts are unanimous when I know that's not really the case. But I, I know coming into DK Vine, you know, this was the, DK Vine was three years after this, less than three years after this at this point, and I, I know, you know, a lot of people out there you know i i found similar freaks so uh, i wasn't the only one but um yeah i mean donkey kong jr was in super mario kart and now the modern donkey kong was in mario kart 64 so despite this being the first case of what was not the donkey kong 94 representation of the arcade donkey kong characters but in fact rares donkey kong appearing in a mario mario game this felt like it was okay because, yeah. again, there was uh, the, the idea that this was now the adult Donkey Kong Jr. 
I liked seeing him in Mario Kart 64. It was a shock, but I immediately got over it. And I think Super Mario RPG kind of prepared me for a more worst case scenario. <laughs> and then by the time I got to Mario Kart 64, it was like, okay, I, I was ready for this earlier this year. And this is more acceptable. Yeah. And this is where the whole idea of the, the cameo game concept was born. Um, again, three years before DK Vine would come around to make that term known to a wider fan base. But you know, this is where the cameo game was born, where Donkey Kong would appear in a Mario side game. Not, not a core Mario game, but a Mario side game, usually a multiplayer affair for the Nintendo 64 or a later console. Yeah, it was and just a cameo, a swing by appearance. Not really a cameo. That's a bit of a misnomer of a term because it's 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 fully playable usually, but it's, it's not like him appearing in say Tetris, you know, just for a brief second. Th- th- this was a full fledged appearance, but cameo game kind of made it sound less consequential. So I think that's why we want that term. But nonetheless, birth of the cameo game concept. Donkey Kong appearing in a legitimate Mario game, even if it can be dismissed as a side game. It was time for me to buy a Nintendo 64 regardless. December 31st, 1998. In the very last hours of the year, Nintendo.com showed off some Japanese games it was bringing over in the first quarter of 1999. Some Fire Emblems? No, no. Fire oh. Emblem was still several years away from beca- becoming Nintendo's oh. core obsession. Uh, they made they, other games? Yeah, there was no Fire Emblem Directs here, uh, sad to say. I, I was also thinking uh, when I was coming up with the show topic this week of starting this week's episode with a, a fake Donkey Kong Direct. And then I realized the amount of production time that would require. <laughs> and the, the fact that the site was still down, I was like... This is not nah. a good use of your time, Heil. Do, do not do it. All right. But uh, among the games they were bringing over was Mario Party and hmm. Super Smash Brothers. Now, the latter, So those were Japan only at first? Well, I think it was... They were being developed in Japan, and it wasn't known if they were going to bring them over. We didn't know about them here in the West, and I don't, I don't know how far in advance they knew about them in Japan. But uh, I remember Super Smash Brothers was a hard sell for Nintendo of America. They they weren't going to bring it over. And then they decided mm-hmm. at like with only months to spare. Yeah, fuck it. Let's just do it. Wow. That was a um, decision. There, there's a history there that somebody more qualified than me could share. Uh, maybe somebody in the chat has said something to add to that. But I know originally the thought was, no, this won't come out in America. All right. So anyway, <clears throat> sorry, clear my throat. Like I said, we're getting over illnesses here at DK Vine. Get those barbed wires out of there. Right. Anyway, so the Super Smash Brothers was, was less of a Mario game. It was more of a all of Nintendo franchise game. It, it was all of Nintendo franchises at that point, the big ones coming together for one mega crossover. So that was no big deal. You know, that that, that was something grander than a merger between Donkey Kong and and Mario. But the former, Mario Party, this was rare as Donkey Kong in yet another Mario game. And this was also the first time that Rare didn't make the 3D model for Donkey Kong, because I should have mentioned in Mario Kart 64, which, by the way, we're going to be having a spotlight episode for in just a couple of weeks to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Mario Kart 64. But... Uh, so I don't, I don't want to dwell on the finer points of Mario Kart 64 too much this week, but Rare did make the 3D model for Nintendo for Mario Kart 64. But Mario Party was the first time that a company other than Rare made the model for Donkey Kong. So, and and Donkey, how'd it turn out? Donkey Kong looked a bit shit in Mario yeah. Party, and he looked a whole lot of shit in Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> it was Wait, that was Donkey that- Kong? Yeah, no, that wasn't just uh, Triangle Conehead Klansman. I thought it was Vector Man. (laughs) No, even Vector Man looked better than Donkey Kong (laughs) in the original Smash Brothers. It was ghastly. But uh, yeah, Mario Party, it it was a video board game created by Hudson Soft. We don't need to belabor that point. But 
it, it, it was, you know, the second time Rare's Donkey Kong was appearing in a Mario game. And we had this wide gulf between Mario Kart 64 and Mario Party of two years. Both came out in, in the West in February 1990, February of that year, Fe- February 1997 for uh, Mario Kart 64, February 99 for Mario Party. And I remember at the time, Mario Party felt more like a semi-sequel to Mario Kart 64 than anything else. Even though it had a completely different kind of genre attached to it, it it didn't really feel like the start of something. It didn't feel like the snowball going down the hill. It felt more just like, oh, this is kind of a clever follow-up to Mario Kart 64. Because all of the characters of Mario Kart 64, uh, Sans, Bowser, and Toad are arguing about who is the bigger superstar. And I just imagine it was based off of their newfound fame from Mario Kart 64, from their racing yeah. careers. And they all got together, and they were having a little bit of a bitch fest, and that was kind of the plot for Mario Party. It felt like... And, and- you know, much like a British uh, TV series, the Mario Party series, uh, you know, had a few more entries than knew when to stop and was had a mature, dignified saga. Right. They had a six-episode season and a Christmas special, and they were Called done. it a day, yeah. <laughs> You're right. I actually, I would like to see the Mario Party Christmas special. I would like to see uh, a game release just called the Mario Party Christmas special. Maybe Mario Which, Kart 25 will be a Christmas game. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. The, it turns out the whole of Mario Kart was like an advent calendar. Yes. That would well, justify anyway. it. Anyway. Yeah, there you go. So that would explain why uh, I've been pulling out chocolates out of my Mario Kart boxes whenever I purchased it. There hasn't Those actually been games inside. Just... Those are not chocolates. I've been eating game cartridges this whole time? Sure. Oh, that explains the blood in my stool. So 1999, uh... though, Mario Party and Super Smash Brothers came out. And we didn't know it in early 1999, but that was the year that the damn broke uh, 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 of this wall i was referring to uh, the, the damn wall yes there we go following super smash brothers we also got the n64 and game boy color mario golf games developed by uh beloved by dk vine developer camelot we didn't have a problem with mario golf i thought you know the, the mario golf series has been i do love really- camelot i mean I, I love matt a lot too and chat a lot but I do love Camelot. <laughs> I love Nick a lot. Aww. Save it for off air. You don't you don't love Hyle a lot though? It, 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 I like Hyle a lot. Just kidding, I love Hyle a lot. Alright. Like I said, Wait. my ego is fragile and it <laughs> constant assertion. We polish that, that ego for you. I'm magnificent. Alright. So anyway, yeah, I, I I mean, so, you know, I remember Mario Golf came out and I was like, okay, whatever. I'm go- golf's okay with me. If Donkey Kong has to be in a Mario sports game, I'm glad it's golf. <laughs> you know, it's fine because I am, you know, a card-carrying uh, country club member. I'm, I'm a white dude. I wear polo shirts. I play golf, right? I'm wealthy. I'm white. I'm privileged. You know, the the only thing that's true it's just is, a confessions uh, podcast now. Or? The only thing that's true is I'm white and I do have a couple of polo shirts that I don't wear that often. But uh, and you do own a golf cart, but that's for other <laughs> right. stuff. Right, that's just because I can't afford a car. Yeah, <laughs> support DK I on Patreon. <laughs> so uh, it has our stickers all over the back of it. It's kind of embarrassing. Right, <laughs> two thousand, the year two thousand. That uh, that uh, operatic tenor voice of yours is just brilliant, Nick. Oh can't yeah, even it's, the barbed it's, wire scars. You can't even no- can't even notice them. I miss when Conan was good. Well, yeah, Conan's apparently on the bubble of cancellation at this point. I know oh. That like T- TBS is talking about like, moving into the internet. And I think Andy like, Richter's uh, Christmas special stole some ratings from it. Really? Yeah. I, I, I just, just a word of warning to Conan. If you're thinking about just moving to the internet, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Look at us. Look at what we're doing. This could be. Come work life. for us, Conan. You, you were a writer on some other shit before. You could write for us. 
Yeah, right, right. I would like to have uh, yeah Conan and Andy as a uh, conversation co-host. That would, that would I mean, be fun. He has the cowlick for it. Uh, although I think it's pretty well established that Conan is pretty ignorant of video games. He's developed. He's actually developing a spinoff about his clueless gamer segments. So uh, oh, I hate those. I do too. <laughs> Again, I miss the old days of Conan. I like Brian. video games and I like Conan. I don't like them together. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's really anyway. just sort of uh, condescending to gamers. But anyway, yeah, yeah. I, I've got to do this before we move on because it's it's conversation tr- tradition. Okay, stay tuned for Conan. All right, hear about this. Hear about this. Oh, oh. Hear about this. Hear about hear about what's in the, the news there. Oh. So the year two thousand saw Mario Party two and Mario Tennis. Two thousand one saw the Game Boy Color Mario Tennis, Mario Party three. Uh, Mario Kart Super Circuit and Super Smash Brothers Melee, which again was not really uh, uh, a Mario game with Donkey Kong, but uh, all Nintendo Jubilee. Uh, but and now it's just a all video game characters Jubilee, <laughs> or all Fire Emblem Jubilee with uh, some charity appearances by other video game characters. <laughs> My point, though, is that the cameo games had become a beast, uh, a beast totally out of control. And from this point, no nation. Yeah. (laughs) From this point on, uh, the majority of all Donkey Kong Universe releases would be cameo games. The majority of Donkey Kong's appearances would be in Mario side games. So, which is a shame. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame, but I think it's also, I I think rare. Alive. Rare was going to try to play catch up a little bit before the buyout because they announced things like uh, Donkey Kong Coconut Crackers, which was going to be you know Donkey Kong branching out into puzzle games. There's going to be multiple Donkey Kong Racers coming out, and I think the buyout kind of killed the possibility of Donkey Kong keeping up with his appearances in the Mario lineage. But it is what it is. I mean, I, we we got really burned out on the cameo games starting around. The end of the modern era of DK Vine, which was essentially uh, the right up to the buyout, right up till uh, Chad and I left temporarily to make Green Porn City our failed webcomic. But um, and then DKU Comics, the second failed webcomic. Hey, DKU Comics is on hiatus, but sure, it's coming back. I think it, yeah. Given the news, some topical ones may be needed, but we'll see. <laughs> right, because. Uh, no better way than uh, to have death threats sent your way than to get topical right now. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you know, we, we were getting burned out on cameo games. I think at this point we've all made our peace with them. It Mostly out of apathy. It, it, we used to get excited about cameo games. Oh my god, Donkey Kong's appearing in Mario Tennis. Batting down the hatches, everybody. Oh my gosh, get- she's a fairy elf that can turn into different monsters. Oh wait, that's a different cameo. Game. Sorry. Oh, you're right, right. So, yeah, we, we did think when Rare announced the game Cameo that it was going to be like uh, <laughs> a crossover of all like these Rare characters. Uh, I remember the image, the, the placeholder image we had on DK Vine's Cameo page, which no longer exists, was like silhouettes of like Tip Top and uh, other uh, like Rare side characters. Really? You guys really thought that? Yeah, we, we made a Cameo page because we were like, oh, Cameo. I bet Wasn't it called be Cameo game. Elements of Power from the beginning, or was there no Elements of Power? I forget, honestly, but we were wrong. We were wrong. This was before, like, Rare was, like, making every game of theirs part of their shared universe. Like, because even, like, the last two Connect Sports games were part of the Donkey Kong universe. So, yeah. Um, Connect Sports would have been, I think, but uh, Microsoft put the kibosh on it at the time put the kibosh on any references to rare related shenanigans in that game well you know it could cameo could have been what you thought it was because that is humbo wumbo is the main character right i think uh no that's pretty racist Uh oh Oh, it's pretty racist you're equating strong native american stereotypes with fairies (laughs) no i'm pretty sure she has feathers in her hair right uh yeah that's true and and to, to be fair yeah they do look remarkably similar. Um, <laughs> anyway, so 
despite all the cameo games and despite Donkey Kong appearing on all of them, it's important to point out that Rare is still keeping the franchise, the Donkey Kong franchise, vital with games like Donkey Kong 64. I mean, say what you will about the quality of Donkey Kong 64. It was a huge fucking deal when it came out, and I think the amount of nostalgia for it shows that to be the case. I mean, that that is the game that people turn to Donkey Kong Country and Donkey Kong 64 as kind of the two big ones that people draw uh, references and influence from. And uh, granted, Donkey Kong 64 did feature the original arcade Donkey Kong game. So Mario yes. did kind of appear in that, but as nothing more than a character on a video game screen in his original Jumpman incarnation. So I, I, I kind of liked it. That was, it was a bit surreal to see that in a donkey in a rare donkey Kong game but it was also a nice nod to the past and of course it felt like something that cranky put in there you know so yeah now that all, all this being said you know we had rare keeping the donkey Kong franchise separate but equal from mario but come to find out rare almost drowned their own baby in the bathwater. <gasps> they almost they almost took a sledgehammer to this <coughs> wall analogy that separated the two franchises because i mentioned they had all of these donkey Kong games in the works pre-buyout they had donkey Kong coconut crackers they had donkey kong racing which is the game we still mourn to this day uh, it should be pointed out too that coconut crackers became the beloved it's mr pants yes. so i think i think no big no loss, loss there. there yeah 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 but uh donkey Kong racing became Superman stampede which was eventually canceled and because of that we just mourn that game like nothing else to this day there's also diddy kong pilot which became banjo pilot but at the time when diddy kong pilot was announced uh they they showed off a character select screen and there were characters like crunch from diddy kong racing k roll dressed in a new pirate uh, or not pirate, a pilot uh, outfit. We, we nicknamed him Kamikaze K. Rule. Uh, and then there was a new character, Redneck Kong. <laughs> so, uh, uh, is this the that, one with that, the whole Aztec thing with the K. Rule? No, no, Nick. So this is this is this is what I'm getting to here. There was actually another build of Diddy Kong pilot that had that. Um, Se- several story elements, including K. Rule looking for the lost golden city of El Dorado, huh, and uh, just just weird shit like that. But and and this was actually showed off at Space World, I think, oh, in the yeah, year two thousand one. But we didn't know this for whatever reason. This was shown off in Japan, and the American. Uh, gaming media never picked up on it i think because nintendo was showing off the gamecube and rare showing off diddy kong pilot just didn't register at all but this was a a build separate from what rare showed off at e3 uh 2001 and um and maybe this was at space world 2001 or maybe it was at space world 2000 and no it couldn't have been at space world 2000 the the timing is a bit unclear because the again the america the american and western gaming media did not pick up on this and we only knew about it until many many years after the fact into the next decade but there was this build of diddy kong pilot <clears throat> that had the following roster so uh, you might want to strap yourself in, Nick. Strap, you use the use the strap ons that you have on your seat because I know your kinks. Uh, <laughs> or would that be barbed wire? I yep yeah, yep. Yeah. I got both. Strap yourself, strap yourself in with the barbed wire, Nick. All right. And ah. because here's the roster for this one build of Diddy Kong Pilot that Rare, at one time or another, was going to go with. My genitals are bleeding. Let's go. Mine always are. Because uh, I've, I also liquefy my gaming cartridges and drink them. And it caused me to piss pure blood. So the roster was Diddy Kong. Eh, Diddy okay, Kong pretty pilot, normal. Makes sense. Cranky. Okay, right Donkey on. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong himself. Obviously. K. Rule in his uh, Kamikaze K. Rule pilot. Awesome, cup. awesome. Funky Kong pilot. Oh, One hell yeah. In, in, in a piloting game he's getting part of the mile high club 
Dixie Kong. You know, it's Dixie good to Kong? see her back after being Hell yeah. in Donkey Kong 64. Everybody loves Dixie Kong, uh, one of the most important characters in our series. Princess Peach. Okay, it makes sense. I mean, I get... Whoa! Mario. Who? <gasps> Yoshi. <laughs> Wario. <laughs> Bowser. <laughs> and Toad. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. This, this, what? Is, this is actually some. This is actually something you can, you can look it up. Just do a Google image search of uh, Diddy Kong Pilot Mario, and you'll see the title screen. And it's it's taken off of a video monitor um, from uh, Space World. And there's no, as far as to my knowledge, there's no leaked uh, like ROM of this as as there is um, the final build of Diddy Kong Pilot before it became Banjo Pilot. But um, there, there is the title select screen of this, and it, it's weird because the select screen, the character icons are done in the illustrated style of the Super Mario instruction booklets. Kind of awesome. The, the characters are computer modeled, and it is surreal to see this character select screen of a D.D. Kong game. I mean, Mario was a character in a Diddy Kong game. So while the turnaround, the, the turnabout was, was fairly delicious to ponder, you know, because Donkey Kong has always appears as a supporting character in these Mario side games. So what if Mario appeared as a supporting side character in a Diddy Kong game? You know, the, I, I love the the revenge aspect of that for the Donkey Kong series, but... At what cost would have would this have been to the integrity of the Donkey Kong series? Because this was oh. a rare Donkey Kong game, a Diddy Kong game actually, but you know what I mean, that would have seen the full integration of Mario into the series. Would they have explained the it story-wise, you think? I don't know. We, we can't find any context. Well, I don't believe anybody... At, who worked at Rare at the time, who worked on the uh, the portable team, the handheld team, has ever come forward with an explanation for why this was even being considered, uh, or e- if this was even a directive. Looks like, what the hell? Dixie Dixie rode in a stealth bomber, and mm-hmm. Toad rode in a UFO? Yeah, Funky Kong rode on his floating surfboard from Donkey Kong yeah. Country 2. Yoshi or, yeah. flew on a cloud that was not Lockatoo's cloud. It looks like something else. Yeah. Really weird. And then I love how the uh, character select screen is organized. It's like the order. Diddy, it's so haphazard. Peach, Mario, the Cranky, then Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah. It is it by no the sense. same artist who did like the the Saber Wolf cartridge art on GBA and like in game art? It's possible since that would be the same team, I, I would imagine. Yeah, it um, looks very similar. But again, I have to stress, this would have been rare taking the sledgehammer to the wall and essentially saying their baby was part of the Mario series, full stop. There wouldn't have been any coming back from this, I don't think. This 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 would have been the death of the notion of the Donkey Kong series as anything separate <clears throat> from Mario. At the hands of Rare. I mean, that, and th- we found out about this, I think, in like uh, 2010, 2011, around that time. Around the time we came like came back fully to DK Vine after Donkey Kong Country Returns was announced. So this was shocking. This was kind of like finding out that like your dad cheated on your mom, you know, uh, a decade prior. You know, like it just completely it would explain the upends. divorce. It would explain the divorce, yeah. But it completely upends any like – conceptions you you had about the way things were about the way you thought the universe worked and um we've equated this version we always say this it was like a weird fever dream i think we even said two weeks ago on the uh the switch fest episode new donk city seems like a fever dream uh on par with the mario cast in diddy kong pilot but um for whatever reason Cooler has prevailed. Mamie Rare said, no, we can't do this. Or maybe Nintendo said, no, you can't do this. Or whatever. But they... No, you can't do this. 
they axed the characters and they went with a full Donkey Kong cast. The final build uh, lost Redneck Kong and lost the Mario characters, but it, it had Candy Kong in their place. Okay. So that was weird, but we didn't know about that at the time. That was completely unbeknownst to us. So September 2002 happens, and it's the buyout, as the, the aforementioned buyout. So at this point, this is the point in time where Nintendo sought to have a unified vision for Donkey Kong. They scrapped all appearances, a eh, lads, of the Donkey Kong 94 versions of DK and DK Jr. that were still running around. Uh, and I think at this point they were only running around in the Game & Watch gallery games hmm. for the most part. But they they decided at this point, um, no, 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 no. We've got to start using Rare's Donkey Kong everywhere because Rare's gone. We're in charge of Donkey Kong 100% now. We don't have a studio developing Donkey Kong games for us. We've got to control the, the direction of Donkey Kong. And this was also the point in time they started having uni unified, uniform game models for all of their characters. So, like, more standardized versions. So you wouldn't have wildly divergent art from game to game, like Hudson Soft creating abominations of, of CG renders of the Mario cast. Or, you know, you, want, you wouldn't have wild fluctuations. You'd still get it from time to time. Like, Sakurai had permission to kind of add artistic flourishes to his, uh, his, his team's models of the Nintendo characters. But for the most part, you had standardized designs. So, at this point, they own, uh, they own all of the Donkey Kong characters lock stop. Like, the, the DK64 Kongs and whatnot that Rare owned. Nintendo's got them all under their control. They they have the destiny of Donkey Kong at their disposal. Game & Watch Gallery 4 makes a half-assed conversion a little bit because they they still had the uh, arcade DK and DK Jr. running around that game. But on the title screen, they swapped out the DK94 uh, Donkey Kong with Rare's Donkey Kong, even though Donkey Kong Jr. is standing right next to him. So, I ha completely half-assed. We covered Game & Watch Gallery 4 on DK Vine solely for that fucking title screen. <laughs> but, uh, I Worth played it. it. I 100% I completed Game & Watch Gallery 4 because Rare's Donkey Kong appeared on that fucking title you screen. You had to 100% it just because of that? <laughs> uh, yes. I, I have an illness. We fully established the illness. All right. Uh, but by the way, I just want to point out in our live stream chat, which you at home can join if you back us on Patreon for five dollars a month. Daddy needs a car that isn't a golf cart, and uh, I call myself Daddy now. Do you like that? Oh, I Are love you on it. board with that. Mm. Mm. I just spanked myself. Wow, is that a conversation first, or have you done that in the past and no one knew about it? That's a conversation first. Uh, anyway, uh, amazing DJ Dustin says he doesn't know if he agrees with my assertion that the Mario characters in Diddy Kong pilot would have uh, killed the separation. He says, couldn't it just be the same as DK and Diddy in the cameo games? But uh, I, I assume he means from like the other end. And yeah, I reverse. guess that's how that's how we would have rationalized it, I guess. But it would have set the precedent. It would have completely broken down the barriers because... It would have been kind of like soiling the holy land, you know. It, it, it's okay if if you commit these sins outside of, you know, uh, Jerusalem. But when when you're like, uh, Rare's games were tantamount to, you know, Jerusalem. Yes. So, which is what uh, the, the time zone Matt Corner arbitrarily placed himself in. Call back to last week. Hashtag so, bring uh, back the spider Jerusalem. <laughs> <What>? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> that's your catchphrase, Nick. You realize <laughs> Never mind. That? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> We're going to print out t shirts that have all of our catchphrases <laughs> on them. And Nick, uh, Nick Pearls is going to be Never mind. Capital N apostrophe M I N D. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> that actually sounds more like a South Park catchphrase. <laughs> Oh, apparently I'm doing my bump 
bumper uh, the Badger impression, according to the, the chat. I'm bumper. Never mind. Anyway. Anyway. Um, where were we? So, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, besides Game & Watch Gallery 4, what happened was Nintendo decided to start using Diddy Kong, which I believe they always withheld from using in these Mario sports games, purely out of respect for Rare, because they viewed it as... And, and Rare understood this, I believe, to be the case as well, that Diddy Kong was Rare's baby, Donkey Kong was Miyamoto's baby. So Nintendo could use Rare's Donkey Kong without permission after a certain extent, but Diddy Kong was kind of sacred to Rare, so they would never use Diddy Kong unless Rare was cool with it, and they never bothered to ask. So now that they now that Rare was gone, they decided, well, we've got Diddy Kong, who's a fairly popular character. He had like our biggest game of 1997, for Christ's sake. So let's start using Diddy Kong. And just in the nick of time, Hey, that's you. Hey. Name. Just in the the prole of the clock because what what happened was uh Nintendo was developing a game, a Mario Kart game for the GameCube that was eventually what became Double Dash. And the uh, as we all know the concept for Double Dash was <laughs> two characters are paired up in the same cart, which I despite Double Dash's many many flaws, I love the concept of Double Dash because I I'm love that about, game. I'm all about the two-player teams. You know, Rare, Rare weaned me on, like, the, the power of teamwork. And I love that Mario Kart is the only Mario Kart game that celebrates teamwork. Uh, full stop from beginning to end. But um, they were developing this Mario Kart game, and Donkey Kong needed a partner. But because of this j unspoken gentleman's agreement with Rare, Donkey Kong's partner wasn't going to be Diddy Kong. It was going to be Donkey Kong Jr., and, of course, the canon, as we understood it, was that the current modern Donkey Kong, Rare's Donkey Kong, was the adult Donkey Kong Jr. Granted, Donkey Kong Jr. did appear alongside the modern Donkey Kong in Mario Tennis, made by our favorites, Camelot. But that was always explained away because Baby Mario also appeared in that game. And I believe that was the first game that Baby Mario – no, maybe it was Mario Golf. One one of the two, but Baby Mario. It was one of the first where Baby Mario ap appeared alongside the adult Mario. Yeah. So we we could easily explain Donkey Kong Jr. in that game the same way. Just time hijinks. They're just plucking Donkey Kong Jr. out of the past with the chest of time, and they are uh, just you know pissing in the wind of time space continuum. So Donkey Kong could play with his toddler self in tennis. But I think having Donkey Kong Jr. as his full stop partner in Double Dash would have had a broader implication. Because while Baby Mario was in Double Dash, Baby Mario had his own partner in uh, Baby Luigi. Luigi was uh, partner in Mario's time. partner in Double Dash. Yeah, there you go. So I think it, it was vitally important for the future of the Donkey Kong franchise itself. Not necessarily because of for any like merger with the Mario series, but just for the integrity of Donkey Kong itself and Donkey Kong canon moving forward to have Diddy Kong as his partner. Yeah. And so this was this was one of the uh, the unexpected bright sides of the buyout for Donkey Kong because Diddy Kong was swapped out at the eleventh hour, not the eleventh hour, maybe the ninth hour or the tenth hour, but still fairly close um, for. Swapped out. Uh, Donkey Kong Jr. was chucked. You can still find Donkey Kong J references to Donkey Kong Jr. in the game if you uh, get into the game code. And Donkey Kong Jr., what looks to be Donkey Kong Jr., but they're actually just, I think, supposed to be gorillas that resemble Donkey Kong Jr. are in I mean, the that, stands. That was Diddy Kong in, in, a, in a racing game that was a huge hit, like a high-profile racing game. So Yeah. His first racing yeah. game since Diddy Kong Racing. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Cameron Regal says in the chat says that the uh, the the source code says um, oh they, they look through the data of the game and Diddy's model was labeled DK Junior. Hmm. So that's how close it was. But DK Junior does appear in some form or fashion in the stands of uh, Wario. I think it's Wario Coliseum in that game. 
Uh, or no, it's a Waluigi Stadium. Yeah. Or, or it's w- whatever the stadium is in that game. Uh, what looks to be Dunk Dunk Jr. appears in the stands, but there's multiple ones. So I always just said they're Red. Was that Waluigi's first appearance, or was he in a party game first? He was in Mario Tennis. That was his first tennis. Appearance. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Because they needed a partner for Wario in that game. That's so weird how, to have a cameo only character. It's very interesting. Yeah, considering there is a Wario series, but yeah. they never get around. Did I ever tell you about my play. my game uh, concept? No, I, I figured... I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow you to say this in my best TT impression. Go for it. Yeah, let's totally uh, derail this. Anyway, uh, now I'll make it quick. Uh, Luigi had Luigi's mansion. I wanted Waluigi's apartment, and it's basically this rundown <laughs> apartment building. It's shitty, like it's so shitty, and the whole goal of it is sort of like how Wario is greedy. While Luigi wants to, like, sort of, uh, what's the, uh, is gentrify the right word or is that racist? I don't know. When a neighborhood becomes more fancy? Yeah, what, gen- gentrify. Oh, yeah, he wants well, to gentrify. It, 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 it'd be appropriate because Mario's originally from Brooklyn, yeah. which is the, the most famously gentrified neighborhood in America. He wants to gentrify the apartment complex. So basically, it's like a sort of a point and click adventure style game where you go around to different, uh, tenants doing tasks for them and such. And, uh, I remember, like, there's, like, mafia members there. It's, like, mousers or uh, uh, these, yeah. like, Italian mobsters and stuff. Anyway, yeah, Waluigi's apartment. I hope it gets made. That's goddamn brilliant, Nick. Thanks, man. I, I, I'm, I'm legitimately being honest with you. I love that. I love that idea. You When you when you said he was, like, run, in a rundown, like, apartment building, I, I pictured uh, the old uh, SNL sketch, the, the Eddie Murphy, uh, Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. Oh, I don't uh, know, but I can uh, – it sounds good. Yeah, well, it's a, l- a little bit racially tinged, yeah. but uh, yeah, You'll basically think... uh, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, but in the the hood. That's as, funny. As yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Eddie. Murphy I just feel like Waluigi. Like... Ne- I always kind of shit on him in my mind because he's not a legit character, so he needs something to make him legit. Yeah, he. You know, I, I do like Waluigi too. You know, I don't like him as much as Wario, uh, so because he's just you know kind of a a pale. Uh, imitation of he's a joke sort of at the moment yeah he's kind of a joke character but i still uh, appreciate him and uh you know we we did have the brief crisis because we uh we briefly considered waluigi to be a dku character a dku born character because he appeared he's his first appearance was in a cameo game mario Mm -hmm. tennis yeah which you know, at the time, we, we, we didn't know really how to deal with that. And we were like, well, do we have to follow Waluigi now in every appearance he makes, even if Donkey Kong doesn't appear? And uh, <laughs> uh, eventually, we, we, we rationalized no, because Donkey Kong is just appearing as a guest character in this game. So any original characters that appear there are not inherently born of the Donkey Kong universe. They're, they're well, born yeah. in... It, it, it's it they're, they're born on a branch they are born in the the nest that's on the branch of the tree that just intertwines with our tree but it's not necessarily connected to our tree well whoever develops really. waluigi's apartment put a aquarium in his house and put royston in it that'd be awesome <laughs> i don't know if they have any authority to put royston in it never mind hashtag never mind <laughs> never mind Mario vs. Donkey Kong was also a series launched uh, about a year and a half after the buyout. And despite the name, it was really just Donkey Kong in Mario's world with Being an absolutely asshole. zero connections to the actual Donkey Kong series. Being an asshole, which we explain away through various means, like being brainwashed by uh, <laughs> by the by subliminal fake news. messages. <laughs> by by the subliminal messages in uh in Mario's um tv commercials so uh yeah it's just fake news okay it's just fake news all right all right get out of here you fake news that that wasn't a trump impression that was my second attempt at a george harrison impression oh because that, uh, that was accurate if that's the case where were we yeah mario versus donkey kong kind of a misnomer and game series title because again donkey kong just appears in a full stop mario game we've always written them off as just cameo games rather than full stop like hybrid mario and donkey kong games tip top kong makes a good point donkey kong is essentially kermit the frog uh appeared on sesame street was essential there but then is a proud main character of something completely separate the muppets yeah essentially even though 
if you want to split hairs, it should be Mario who's considered that because the name of the game wasn't Jumpman. The name of the game wasn't Mario, this is a good the guy point. who yeah. runs up construction site. The name of the game is Donkey Kong. The name never of the forget. game is Lightworks. <laughs> Hashtag never mind. Never mind. Um, Mario versus Donkey Kong. People like use this to argue that, oh, well, th- if you're going to talk about a merger, that was the merger right there. It's not really a merger. I don't see Diddy Kong in those games. I don't see anything related to Donkey Kong other than Donkey Kong. Pauline appears in the game starting with the second one. So if anything, it, it's supposed to be a tribute to the original arcade games. So you would think Cranky Kong would appear in there somewhere, but, you know, whatever. Um, but it, it's clear that for whatever reason, whether it's marching orders or a desire by the team that makes them, it's clear that the Donkey Kong iconography that, that Rare created and then other companies like Payon would, you know, continue Payon and Retro would, would continue the, the lineage of. It's being kept at arm's length in the uh, the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series, which you would think that would be the first one to bring in everybody else. Oh, let's let's get in Rambi. Rambi can uh you know charge Yoshi. Let's get in uh let's get in Luigi to fight Diddy Kong. You know, let's let's do the they don't do that and Honestly, I would be okay with that because if you're going to have a game series called Mario vs. Donkey Kong, let's actually make it Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Let's have the two worlds go at it. I think it would be the one place where it would be acceptable. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, let's take one call real quick um, before we move on to the the back half of our story up to the modern day. And let's see what uh, somebody has to say about the topic at hand this week. Hello, uh, hi, and someone else. This is that guy whose voice you can apparently recognize. Anyway, you know how, um, there's, uh, Donkey Kong characters in Mario spin-offs, but not Wario Land and WarioWare characters in there. Instead, we have Waluigi. What do you think, uh, you know, instead of Diddy Kong, what, what if, uh, Nintendo or some other Japanese studio created a partner for Donkey Kong, who's not a Donkey Kong Jr., uh, just for the spinoffs, a, uh, Wa Donkey Kong, as you will. I imagine he would be like a green NHP uh but not a but not like Mojo Jojo from Powerpuff Girls. Actually, well that would be great if Mojo was like Donkey Kong's partner. Bye-bye. Thank you for the increasing drift into your own madness, ILDC. Not to say he's mad. Brings up, yeah, this, is, this is kind of what we were just talking about. So, you know, you, you think it's funny that Waluigi was created solely to be a partner of Wario in the cameo games, but Waluigi has never appeared in an actual Wario game. And, you know, ILDC brings up the good point. What if this happened with Donkey Kong? What if they created a a partner or associate of Donkey Kong in the cameo games that then, therefore, never appeared in the Donkey Kong series? How would we at DK Vine deal with that? Um, that's, that's a really good point. Um, wow, that would, that would be kind of a, a bit of a mind puzzle. And... Um, I guess the closest we ever got was Chain Kong and Gorilla in Super Mario RPG, but Donkey Kong never appeared in that game proper, so we can kind of write those two guys off as eh, not being real canon Kongs. Well, know, they, really there was 12 years of Chain Kong that won an Oscar. 
Not a racist <laughs> joke. The character has chains, making it a slave. It, it was, you know, the, the finest movie uh, on that time period, I think, until uh, The Birth of an Archipelago <laughs> uh, came out this year. Of course, then we found out that, you know, the uh, the person who made that was, in fact, the ape raper. And oh, kind of just yeah. tarnished the whole, uh, kind of t- tarnished the whole promotion of that movie. But... um. This this is a good this is a good uh, quandary because DK Vine did have uh, an archaic rule in our book of book o laws that said that if Rare had ever created a a Kong character that never appeared in the Donkey Kong Country series, we called him Pepito Kong. <laughs> and if, Pep- if why Pepito again? Kong, because we needed a stupid silly name, and this was this was kind of the era when when DK Vine started. It was the era where like random humor was funny. Uh, Still is apparently. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, Conan O'Brien was obviously a big influence of those early days of DK Vine. Speak, speaking of Conan, and so what? what what's just a re- weird non secretor that we can go with for a a fake Kong name? Pepito, Pepito <laughs> yeah. Kong. Uh, so anyway. Pepito Kong, uh, but the notion was that if Rare created a Pepito Kong game, they didn't feature any appearances from any pre-established Donkey Kong characters, and uh, Pepito Kong never appeared in a Donkey Kong game prior to would this. Would that be DKU? Would, would that be DKU? And we said it would because it was made by Rare. And it's a Kong. And Rare is Rare is the kind of god, the, the god of the DKU. So what they say goes. And, of course, post-buyout, the whole notion of Pepito Kong is kind of thrown up into the air because who the fuck knows? I mean, who who is in charge of Donkey Kong now? We still say Rare is the god word of God of the DKU, but they don't have any really say of Donkey Kong at this point. So would we actually follow a Pepito Kong game? I don't know. Would we follow uh, a Pepito Kong if Pepito Kong was created in a cameo game and appeared alongside Donkey Kong. Would a Pepito Kong because... Chuck Wood if a Pepito Kong could Chuck Wood? Right. What if Pepito Kong was a naughty? Um, oh, he's naughty. So ultimately, this would be, I think, one of those all hands on deck. We need all available DKU legal scholars at hand. To suss this out, this would be a tracky train situation. What the fuck is tracky train? I don't. I, I honestly don't know. ILDC. Uh, I don't know what we would do. I, I would be inclined to say he he wouldn't be like DKU. He wouldn't be like somebody we would have to follow. We would still like acknowledge him as a Kong, but he would be a non DKU Kong. He would be DKU, but he wouldn't be DKU born. So we couldn't really fall. It'd be a weird situation. And I, I know it would be one where people would argue until they were blue bear in the face. I know like Jeff Onan would probably disagree with me. I don't know why I'm singling out Jeff. It just, he and I, we, we come from a similar place, but we always come, we always approach that. We, we go towards a similar place, but we always approach that place from opposite ends of the path. So it, it's it's uh it's it's something that I think we would argue about. He's a Pepito truther, wrong. right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, Pepito Kong can't melt steel beams. Have you tried it? It's, it's true. Donkey Kong can stand on them, but. So I believe it was uh, when did this game? 2006, I think, is when it came out. Yoshi's Island DS, and the continuity nightmare that is Baby Donkey Kong. Now, this is not a mainline Mario series. Uh, Yoshi, the Yoshi series has its roots. It was spun off from the, the mainline Mario series. Same way Wario was spun off from Mario Land. But um, Yoshi is kind of its own thing. Even though Baby Mario you know, appears in most Yoshi sure. games. Even though Yoshi's entire rogues gallery is just made up of Mario castoffs like Shy Guys and and Kamek and that's uh, some original Baby stuff Bowser. of its own too. They have they have some original stuff, but I mean, the, Yoshi has never fully escaped being a Mario property the same way that Wario has, and in the extreme same way that Donkey Kong has. Yeah. So Yoshi's Island DS had. All sorts of baby characters of, of Mario characters that don't normally appear in, in the mainline Mario series. You had baby Wario. You had baby Donkey Kong. And and yeah, I know Wario appeared in Super Mario 64 DS, which is still weird to this day. I, I, I can't believe Wario actually managed to get in there, you know? Uh, even though that was just a remake of a mainline Mario series. But 
it, it's funny that you know it could have been worse. Donkey Kong could have been in Super Mario sixty four DS, and uh, <laughs> that'd be weird. That would be weird. But he was in Yoshi's Island DS in some form or fashion. We accept Yoshi's Island DS as a Donkey Kong universe game because baby Donkey Kong appears. Because what baby Donkey Kong is, is he is a rare-eyed version of a of a baby Donkey Kong. He's, 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 a, he's kind of a new creation for this game, but it's clear that he's modeled after rare's Donkey Kong. So we accept it. But... We don't know what the fuck he's supposed to be because it, it kind of does break what we understand as Donkey Kong continuity to a slight degree. And there's lots of arguments. There's lots of theories out there. Uh, baby Donkey Kong could be baby Cranky Kong and apes age faster than humans. He could be baby Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. could be an older version of baby Donkey Kong. Um, th- those are the two prevailing theories. The fact that we still haven't completely all come into agreement on what this could be shows how fucking as nine it is. But um, yeah, there you go. And it showed what dangers lie in the heart of Nintendo and Nintendo's various development teams having a go at Donkey Kong without caring one goddamn bit about Donkey Kong continuity. Yeah, exactly. As, as established by Rare and as established by. As preserved by Payon and other companies at this time. So, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Yoshi's Island DS is kind of an anomaly. Because even though I think Baby Donkey Kong would like pop up uh, in Mario sports games. Um, very rarely, but from time to time. This is his sole appearance. He didn't become a, a mainstay fixture of the Yoshi's Island series. What is with the whole baby thing? I mean, we should address that. I mean... I mean, it made sense in the first uh, Yoshi's Yoshi's Island. It was cool for the story. I mean, it was it was clever, but why do they keep bringing it back so many times and extending it to so many characters? You know, I think I think any Japanophiles who are, are listeners to the conversation would have to explain it to me. The chibi nature of it, or something. I, I believe it has to do with I, for some for whatever reason, it, it is a thing like. In, in Japanese fan culture, they love alternate versions of the same character. Yeah. And the more, the better. You know, you, so you've got, you know, the, these, like, very powerful versions of characters. I, I think, you know, the, the extent we get in that is, like, Metal Mario in the Mario series. But then you've got also... It's like a Super the, Saiyan form or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, and, you know, in uh, Donkey Kong Barrel Blast, we had the Super Saiyan version of Donkey Kong in that game as an unlockable, you know. What did he look like? Kind of like, he was like, he was, he wasn't even like on fire, you know. Um, <laughs> which is, it was just the most overtly Japanese I think Payon ever got because they pretty much, it pretty much was a celebration of, of Rare's very Western oriented characters. They didn't always get the personalities right, but they definitely, had the love for them yeah uh but yeah baby characters metal characters uh wah versions of characters <laughs> i mean they, they, they love them they love them they can't get enough and as much as we complain about the mario kart roster being shit as a result i don't think they're complaining so um yeah fair enough anyway yeah, so Yoshi's Island DS, it was, at the time, a lot of people said, this is it. This is the merger. It's happening. It's all over. Pack it in. Call in your loved ones. Call your loved ones. Tell them goodbye. Pack Go up your loved counter. ones. Pack up your loved ones. If you're uh, Ed Gwynn, you know, pack up their skins. Ed uh, Gein. But, or oh, Gein. Oh, it's Fred. Fred Gwynn is, uh, is Herman Munster. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Completely different kind of Halloween character. Although he might pack up some of his loved ones. If one's like a mummy, he just unravels it, puts it in a suitcase. We we don't know. Yeah, we maybe we didn't see the full extent of the Munster clan. Yeah. So, this was a false alarm, but it's the closest we got. And I think because it was with the Yoshi series and not the mainline Mario series, we averted disaster here. And it, it was just kind of a, this weird blip, this weird oddity in the timeline of the Donkey Kong universe. We accept it as we accept it as canon. It happened. But and we, we haven't fully figured out how it can be reconciled with our own canon. Like how is Donkey Kong a star child in the Mushroom Kingdom when we don't 
fully accept or not all of us fully accept that the Donkey Kong Island or the Rare Archipelago is even on the same dimensional plane as the Mushroom Kingdom. But whatever. Whatever. It, 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 it's an oddity. We can come up with our own fanon rationalizations for it. And eventually we'll do a spotlight episode for Yoshi's Island DS where we do just that. And I'm looking forward to it. I look forward to the challenge. Bring it on. So uh, around this time, about a year later, well, no, I mean, it would have been during the development. Uh, so 2006, roughly. Did you know that the Capuchins, the white monkeys from Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, were originally going to appear in Super Mario Galaxy? Hmm. It was, so Galaxy was planned that far back? Or you're saying after it the was, fact? Super Mario Galaxy came out in 2007, did it not? Yeah, I'm just saying, you're saying they were originally going to appear in Galaxy before Jungle Beat? Or no, after no, no, Jungle no, 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 I'm, I'm saying during, in 2006 when it was in development. Ah, okay, um, that's interesting. Jungle Beat came out uh, in the West in 2005. And they would have been the same exact character design and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were they were kind of like, they looked, I, I've because the models have been found in-game, like if, if you break into the, the, the source code, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a hacker. I don't know what to do. I, I don't type the keyboard really fast and, you know, and enhance like they do on the, the CBS procedurals. But um, I like those guys as far people... as the concept. I like the idea of adding more types of monkeys to Donkey Kong. No, I, I am fine with the Capuchins. I think they're one of the the best designs from Jungle Bee. But the Jungle Bee team was essentially the same team as Super Mario Galaxy. So that's why the Capuchins were going to appear. Yeah. And for whatever reason, cooler heads prevailed. And I think I know who was responsible for putting the kibosh on it. Because in Super Mario Galaxy 2, the same team wanted none other than Donkey Kong himself to appear. In Super Mario Super Galaxy 2? In Super Mario Galaxy 2, they wanted Donkey Kong to appear as, I think, a boss character. Oh, no. And I know. And um, Miyamoto stepped in and said, no, you're not putting Donkey Kong in a Super Mario, in a main Super Mario game. I will not allow it. To his credit, I mean, Miyamoto, you know, we, we used to give him so much shit on DK Vine, and I really do regret it because even though, like, my ideal type of video game doesn't necessarily align with Miyamoto's vision 100%. Mm -hmm. I respect the hell out of the man of and it's for reasons like this. Miyamoto gave us Diddy Kong and Diddy Kong Racing. He said to Rare... He gave us Donkey Kong essentially. He gave us Donkey He gave us Donkey Kong himself. Come on. Uh, Miyamoto's... I mean uh, the, the more I learn about the decisions he made that weren't widely known at the time, the more I respect the hell out of now, the What man. was his reasoning so, for not wanting him in, in Galaxy 2 if say he's okay with him appearing in other cameo games. Was it the nature of the context? Because Super Mario, Gal Super Mario Galaxy 2 is a mainline Mario game, and he felt like there has to be this dividing line, this separation. Uh, the, the main argument, they also wanted to put Pikmin in the game, which he was opposed to, but he felt like the main series should stay separate because well, then that, at the very least... Speaking of kibosh, that puts the kibosh on the whole kind of hopefully wrong and semi-stupid theory going around that, and I know we're not to it yet, but the new Donk City, the fact that Donkey Kong could be a boss there, that won't happen if, right. if Miyamoto's still alive, right? Well, he was opposed to it at the time of Super Mario Galaxy 2. We'll just say okay. that much. But he felt that the art styles between Donkey Kong Country and Super Mario didn't mesh. And to be they honest, don't. they really don't. They don't. So, um, and, and he, I guess he just also felt like there should be some in, integrity between the franchise. It's okay if Donkey and Diddy and later on characters like Dixie and Funky and even K. Rule appear in different Mario, like multiplayer sports games and, and whatnot. It, it, that, that's, some, that's different because those have less consequence. But the mainline Super Mario series, it's kind of a, a sacred cow. And you don't want to slaughter that sacred cow. So thanks, Miyamoto. Like, he really did us a solid there. Like, seriously. Um, it, should be, it should be pointed out, though, when we're talking about, you know, oh, Donkey Kong and Mario are two separate things, except in this case and except in that case. Well, during this time period, Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, and Dixie Kong were available to uh, merchandisers 
under the Super Mario licensing brand. Okay. So what this meant was that toys or other pieces of merchandise, be it clothing or even licensed accessories for your DS, like the game cases, uh, they could be sold under the Mario brand name. I, so I don't like get... it, and I feel like the people in charge of that decision, they just didn't understand the uh, the nuanced separation between the two. But otherwise, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's fine. Yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, like, I understand why these characters were available under the Super Mario brand, because they do appear in Mario-branded games. You can make all the distinctions yeah. you want between, say, the core Mario series and just the inconsequential cameo games. But Donkey to... Kong ain't a Mario character in my mind, but he's part of the Mario universe, so sort of. Or, or he, vice versa. He... Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, there's definitely... Yeah, I mean... The part of the Mario... Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, as far as the marketing universe is what I mean. He's connected. Right. He's not in the Mushroom Kingdom, but he's connected to Mario. Right. Yeah. But you can't explain to Madison Avenue, you know, well, the, <clears throat> you know, Donkey Kong is his own separate thing. No, you see here, Donkey that... Kong is his own thing. <laughs> if you go to DKVine.com, they'll explain in <laughs> much colorful language. I mean, I mean, now listen here, Donkey Kong is his own thing. Jimmy Stewart? Why, why is Jimmy... Okay. Well, he went to Washington. He went to... Ma <laughs> Mr. Smith goes to Madison Avenue. Jim, J Jimmy Stewart went to Washington to argue the case why Donkey Kong is separate from Mario. <laughs> now, 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 listen that, here, all right? That that was actually in the sequel, Mis uh, To Mr. Smith, To Washington. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, well, uh, Vin Diesel, he's a real chump. <laughs> Real... He's a candy ass. Yeah, candy ass. Uh, anyway, so you would buy, say, a little Diddy Kong toy, and it would be in red packaging with the Super Mario logo on it, and Mario. You would just ignore that, and then yeah. visage. Yeah. So on one hand, I was happy to get this merchandise. Better than I have nothing. a lot of this merchandise on display in the DK Vine Command Center that I'm recording in, but. On the other hand, it was kind of just a blow because I remember when Donkey Kong had its own merchandise. The Donkey Kong uh, brand, the Donkey Kong license, was vital enough that it had its own times change. Line, unfortunately, that it had its own bubble gum series, that it had, had its own fruit snacks. Donkey, well, Conker has its own condoms. <laughs> you remember those? Yeah, Conkdoms. It's it's just too bad that they weren't like in the shape of, of conquer characters. Like you, you could have had like acorn shaped uh, tip. Well, Fra I think Frankie would have been the easiest one. To <laughs> uh, Except uh, that they would have left the, the two prongs on the end. So uh buyer beware. It's for bifurcated peni. <laughs> Talking about bleeding out of your genitals. Yeah. So this practice does continue to this day, but thankfully we we see less of it thanks to Jack Specific getting the Nintendo toy line. Uh, what Jack Specific what they do is the under the World of Nintendo series they give each individual series its due. So Donkey Kong toys are under the Donkey Kong brand, and they come in yellow packages. That's why they call it Jack Mario. Specific. <laughs> nice. Uh, the, Mario gets brand, uh, red branded packaging with Mario. You still get it. Um, like, for example, the um, they made these DK barrels for your 3DS cartridges. and um, Or 3DS cards, excuse me. They aren't really cartridges. Oh, yeah. You have one and of those, that, right? That, yes. And it was marketed under the Super Mario brand there, which is like, it's a DK Are barrel. Are those still around? Are those expensive? I, Fuck I need you. one of those. You can still find those, yeah. If not in storage, you can easily find it on Amazon.com. Amazon.com! Make sure you click through on our side banner link for a tip top secret of how to grow a big dick. That'll take you over to Amazon, and half your purchase money will go to us. I like how I'm always complaining about being so cash-strapped, and yet we have fake ads <laughs> on our site instead of like anything that could actually generate revenue. It's better that way. I do it to myself, don't I? You do it to yourself. You do. Hashtag never mind. <laughs> so 
Moving on to the retro era. Retro's Donkey Kong games have numerous references to Mario, thankfully in just what amounts to subtle Easter eggs. But the Easter eggs uh, amount to more than they do to the uh, references to rare Donkey Kong games. Grumble, grumble, grumble. For example, one of Bowser's tanks from Super Mario Bros. 3, from off of Super Mario Bros. 3, appears in Juicy Jungle and Tropical Freeze. Really? And, um, yeah. yeah. Why didn't I know and, that? Uh, no, no doubt from when he led the invasion to steal the banana horde in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. one of his tanks just wound up in Juicy Jungle. Uh, what did the tanks look like again? Mar- or, or is that the clown ship thing, or...? No, 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 no. Remember in Super Mario Brothers 3 in uh, Bowser's Dark World, uh, those, those procession of tanks, those tank stages, the, the auto-scrolling ones? I don't think I ever got where, to those because uh, I suck at that game. Not even with the warp whistle? I never... Not even with the warp whistle. I never whistle, owned man. it. I never owned the game, so... Oh, okay. But... You know what? I, I'm one of those weird gamers who thinks Super Mario Brothers 3 is overrated. I like Super Mario. And I like Super Mario Brothers. Too. Yeah, you love to a lot more. I love. You're just too. a big. I love you're in a big Doki Toki panic. panic to yeah. To spread yeah, the word, Doki, if you got them. <laughs> uh, you can also hear Mario singing along with the the chorus in Grassland Groove. Oh which, really? You know, yeah, yeah. Once you hear it, you can never unhear it. Oh, which so kind then, of yeah. You, you can hear him go woohoo or yippee. We're sure that's yeah, supposed it, to be him. It's buried in the mix, but it's certainly him. And, uh, okay. They even got uh, Lou Albano I, to record it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they got a Ouija board and, um, Ouija uh, board. They, they... <laughs> <laughs> that should be the next, okay. like, MacGuffin in the next Luigi's Mansion, the Luigi board. Or they could just, if they want to do video board games, fuck Mario oh. Party Christmas special. And it's booze that do... talk to you. Do oh. the Luigi board. Oh, fuck yeah. We're rich. <laughs> we're going to be rich. This is Nintendo. We're giving you so many golden ideas for free. Get Parker Brothers we're on the asking... phone. All right. Uh, while Luigi's apartment. We, Luigi board. The Luigi board. Come on. We're just we're shitting ideas asking... out. We don't need royalties for these, Nintendo, but what we will require it's a blow job. are um, a cut of the merchandising rights. Yes. And just a simple plug in the end credits for the conversation. Actually, just do the whole due diligence spiel in the credits. And I I demand to retain animation rights. (laughs) Yeah, you don't want to make the mistake that uh, Joe Blue made with Mr. Banana Grabber. I mean, is he banana that grabs other bananas? I just don't understand. (laughs) Anyway, um... Yeah, I mean, it's not literally supposed to be Mario hanging out in Grassland Groove. It's a little Easter egg that I don't know if it was David Wise's idea or if it was uh, Retro's idea, but it's there. It's there. There's some wise guy's it. idea. I know that. You can't unhear it. All right. So uh, there, there's also minor Easter eggs to uh, next level games uh, sneaked in a jokey reference to Kalimba in Speaking of Luigi, Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon. Uh, there's some green ghosts in that dark game. Dark of the Moon? have spears. Yeah, Dark of the Moon. Uh, or as uh, my, my, one of my favorite Jeff Odin jokes on uh, DK Vine was uh, Luigi's Mansion. Or no, it was uh, if Next Level Games did a Diddy Kong Racing, it would be uh, Diddy Kong Racing, Adam Hart Mother. It's for all, all, all you uh, Pink Floyd fans out there. Give them the Pink Floyd fans a lot this episode. Yeah, I mean, they don't need no education, but you're giving it to them. Usually, uh, usually we just uh, have stuff for the Beatles fans, and you try to you know placate any Zappa fanatics out there. But uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, these green ghosts have spears in the game with a kalimba-shaped ornament on the end. Huh. So kalimba, one of the uh, the, the main. Or, or what we consider to be the main Tiki Tak tribe priest in Dunk on Country Returns. Mercifully, before we get to Super Mario Odyssey and, and and deal with the the ultimate point of this episode, let's take one more call and then we can 
finally hash it out. The implications and the consequences of New Donk City and what happens if the Kongs actually appear in the game and the implications thereof. And if there is a merger, would the Donkey Kong universe be ruined forever? <gasps> so on that lovely note, let's take this call. Uh, hey guys, it's uh, Cuburn uh, from Off the Form. So this upcoming uh, podcast about uh, the Mario universe and Donkey Kong universe finally merging in together, basically. I am more than willing to embrace this for numerous reasons, but uh, it's one of them, the biggest ones for me is that finally you add substance to a pet series I've had for ages. Okay, okay. So uh, you know the blogs from uh, Mario World, right? The big things with the big teeth and big mouths and everything that live in lava. You ever notice how they look like that they're made out of the stuff that they're surrounded by? I know that the Nepnuts from uh, Yoshi's Island, they're blue and they live in water. I think there are some new ones uh, in some of the newer games that live in sand and are sand-colored, sort of yellowish. Basically, what I'm getting at is that the Great Mighty Pooh is, in fact, a blog made out of shit. That is my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you, and good night. Uh... Thank you for the call, uh, Q-Burn. That was uh, in no way helpful to the topic at hand. Okay, so <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey, Nick. It looks to me like this game, if, if they mess up with it, it could be a real blarg made out of shit. Also made by the Jungle Bee team, and we know this team has been trying to integrate Donkey Kong into <laughs> Mario since... since Every game they've made since Jungle Now Beat. that I know about the Capuchin thing and the DK boss thing, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. So So they like they like Donkey it, Kong and they apparently like Donkey Kong Country more than they let on before. Or maybe they've just finally broke been broken down. It's they like, found uh, our website and they feel guilty now. They they the shame. The shame The freshness. <laughs> it's imagine how uh what 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 I would th- imagine it'd be like for retro after trying time and again to create new villains for Donkey Kong and then just having people be like, That's great, when are the Kremlings coming back? Yeah. That's great. When are the and they're just like, Oh, oh And then oh, they fuck. like ruin the Kremlings and people are like, Bring the snow bats back. Right. So th- this team has been trying this. Will the third time be a charm? Will they override Miyamoto or or just break him down? and get Donkey Kong in a core Mario game, a Super Mario <laughs> game. Is this the start of the merger? <gasps> Will the Donkey Kong universe survive? Dun, dun. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Of course it will survive. Look, here, here are my thoughts on this. The Donkey Kong universe cannot be broken at this point. It's... It's been too long. It's proved too resilient. We always approach this stuff as kind of the odd ducks compared to the rest of Nintendo fandom and even to the rest of Donkey Kong fandom. Like I'm talking about DK Girder, our, our good friend I am Gibbon of DK Girder. You know, he, he approaches the whole of Donkey Kong, the arcade series and the country series. And his appearances with Mario as, as one like whole thing, the, not necessarily worrying about the spin-offs as we equate them: Banjo Kazooie, Conquer, uh, Dinosaur Planet, uh, spin-offs of the spin-offs like Grab by the Ghoulies, It's Mr. Pants, Viva Pinata, uh, Sea of Thieves, Ukulele. They don't have to worry about that like we do, but w- we hear DK Vine. Um, and I'm not talking about the whole DK Vine forum community. I'm just talking about DK Vine staff, at least. We approach things as rare fans first and foremost. In our minds, in our sick, sick minds, Nintendo has less agency when controlling Donkey Kong's fate than Rare does. And Rare hasn't well, even been making a Donkey Kong game uh, since Diddy Kong Racing DS. Over the tie-wearing uh, Donkey ago. Kong. Nintendo could do whatever they want with arcade Donkey Kong. Right, right, right. The, the the tie wearing Donkey Kong with the pronounced brow and rare features, the the slicked cowlick and and whatnot. Now, yeah, we are quite messed up in the head. I realize that you don't have to again 
call in. You don't have to make the angry YouTube comments. I realize we're idiots. Okay? I get it. I get it. But we'll roll with whatever punches need it. To make it clear that Donkey Kong, in our minds, is still its own thing. Even if we're the only people in the world who view it as such. I... Like Okay, so the whole world can view Donkey Kong as a Mario series. They can view Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, down the line Doesn't make it as one. Mario characters. Doesn't make it one to us. And that's what's important. We are very much viewing this thing from the prism of the mid-90s. The way things started out as for our series. We're not going to buckle to any evolution of... The way you classify this series. Now, will we have to accommodate any continuity revisions that Super Mario Odyssey might bring about in relation to New Donk City? Perhaps. There's every bit the possibility that New Donk City will will be established as being in the Mushroom World. That will it will establish Donkey Kong Island and Donkey Kong's world to be part of the Mushroom World. And of course, it's not going to take into account Timbers Island. The Isle of Hags, Willow Woods, Viva, uh, P- Pinata Island, Pants Land. It's not going to take into account any of this stuff that we hold as sacred canon. Because why would it? Because the team making this game has no concept of that. They don't care. This is them steamrolling what we view as, as sacred but I realize they don't have to view it as sacred because why would they? This, why would they view what Rare has done as sacred when it has very little relation to Nintendo? It does, I mean, it, it's, it's besides historical purposes. So I get it. But we're also surprisingly savvy when it comes to our capacity for fan wanking. Mm-hmm. Um, th- this isn't the first time that Nintendo has kind of turned a blind eye to the fact that Donkey Kong doesn't live in the Mushroom Kingdom. I look back at Double Dash, and I look at what was supposed to be Donkey Kong's track in Double Dash, and you had uh, very very Mario-esque eyes on everything in the landscape. Yeah, Uh, The clouds had eyes. The mountain, the, the volcano had eyes and a mouth. Rocks and trees had eyes. This was not Donkey Kong Island. As much as Rare loves googly eyes, this was not Donkey Kong Island. So I, you know, even if it was supposed to be Donkey Kong's home, you also saw like Baby Park in the background and, and all this. It was more the type stuff. of place in the Mushroom Kingdom that Donkey Kong would enjoy. Yeah, I, I, I fan wanked it away as it was uh, Mario Land, as a, the a Mario amusement park as established in Mario Party 2. And that's where a lot of the tracks in Double Dash took place, including Donkey Kong's home track in that game. It was a Donkey Kong section of Mario Land. And if Mario Land can have a Donkey Kong section, but Donkey Kong can then go home to Donkey Kong Island, why can't we view it the same way for the series itself? If the Kongs appear in Super Mario Odyssey... We'll roll with it. We'll we'll still label Super Mario Odyssey as a cameo game, but we're not going to view it as the beginning of a merger. And maybe, just maybe, this team just needs to get it out of their system once. And once they do it, they'll never have to do it again. So maybe this is just getting the inevitable over with. The thing that we've been worried about since 1996. Donkey Kong appearing in a main Super Mario Sometimes game. the thing maybe, you fear, maybe, once it happens, you're like, oh, that was what I was so afraid of? Right, right. So, you know, it, it's like ripping a Band-Aid off. Let's, let's just get it over with. If it's going to happen, let it be with Super Mario Odyssey. And, it's very George um, Harrison of you. Let it be. Thank you. I've really perfected my George Harrison philosophy, okay? All right? So, all things must pass, all right? It's something I say. I wrote that. It's better, better than Paul's stuff, all right? I think Paul is a fake songwriter, all right? I don't believe him. I think he's ugly. I think he's a liar. Uh, Hashtag never mind. This has been a File 2 production. Perico. Shigeru Miyamoto. Mi- Miyamoto. Mi- Shigeru Miyamoto. I'm Homer Simpson. Joe. <laughs>